Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lanolin, and we are back with episode 105 of my Modern Minecraft Let's Play series. Whoa! And it's very spooky outside. It is raining and thunderstorming and lightning and everything's scary. But that's okay, because we're going to be working away from all of that loudness down here, working on our applied logistic system. What are we doing today? Well, last episode, well, I should say, actually, what did we do last episode? Last episode, we automated the creation of charged Certus Quartz with the charger. It was pretty simple to do. Didn't require too much effort. A couple, uh, couple of components. Actually, I guess we can still hear the thunder. But yeah, only required a few components and only required, I think, two channels. One channel for the interface and one channel for the import bus. I actually neglected to mention that last episode. But I guess if you were paying attention, you would have noticed that it only took two channels. <laughs> but anyway, this episode, we're going to be doing something similar, but with the matter condenser. It's pretty cheap to make, but does some pretty awesome stuff. So let's actually get this guy made. We're actually going to need to make quite a few different things for this build, uh, because automating this guy is not, it's not super straightforward. Um, well, I mean, I guess I should say it, it's pretty straightforward, but it's not as obvious, I should say, as some of the, some of the other things that we've automated in this series, uh, because the matter condenser uh, creates matter. Well, it creates matter balls. However, it doesn't create matter from nothing. You need to be able to give it some sort of item that it can condense into these matter balls right here. There's no recipe for them, obviously, because they're created in the uh, matter condenser. So, what are we going to use to create these matter balls? Well, the easiest thing, honestly, in my opinion, is obviously cobblestone. But how are we going to automate the creation of cobblestone? Well, I'm glad you asked. Extra Utilities actually provides us with something really cool. If we remember back, way back... Oh, nice, we already have some transfer pipes. Hell yeah. If we remember back when we were playing around with Blood Magic, recreated something called a... Not a transfer node. A transfer node. These guys are pretty cool, because they can actually do quite a few different spectacular things. And we only need one, just like last time. But this time, um, we're, instead of using the hyper-rationing pipe that we used to make sure that we only moved one thing at a time, uh, this time... We're going to be using a world interaction upgrade. Nice. Not too bad to make. The only irritating thing is the fact that you need these freaking pick iron pickaxes all the time. But, haha, that is why we have auto crafting. So, first things first, let's teach it how to make an iron pickaxe. You do it like that. Let's go ahead and put this guy in here. I oh, mean, we're going to need to add more interfaces soon. After that, we need to teach you how to make a world interaction upgrade. Now, honestly, this is another thing that if you use these guys a lot, it's probably going to be worth your time to auto-craft these guys. Although, as you can see, it's definitely worth your time to auto-craft everything. Actually, let's put that guy over here. Let's put the encoded pattern over there. You don't need, like I mentioned, you don't necessarily like have to keep these guys super organized the way that I'm doing. I just do it because I, it, it makes it a little bit easier to access stuff because I know all my applied energistic stuff is going to be right here and right here. Yeah. So anyway, uh, where were we? Oh yeah, I wanted to make some more of these world interaction upgrades because um, I'll show you why in a moment, but I want to make like not 100. <laughs> like 20 for now. Go. 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, 20. Bam! You know how long that would have taken me to do by hand? Fucking forever. <laughs> all of those freaking... Making all of these iron pickaxes by hand, then tossing them in there, and then making these guys one at a time. Uh, that would have been awful. But, luckily, we can do it all in a matter of moments. So we have our transfer node, we have our world interaction upgrades, transfer pipes, matter condenser. Uh, we are also going to need... A handy dandy import bus. I needed a lot of stuff to make one import bus. Holy cow. See, that's why we have all of these co processing units because otherwise, I don't think we would have been able to create that import bus. Because, see, it needed to make an annihilation core, it needed to make a sticky piston and a piston. So, that's three steps minimum right there. So, anyway, uh, we got our import bus because we're going to want to make sure that we can get our modder balls back into our system so we can access them. Um, what else do we want to make? Oh, yeah. We also need a lava bucket, which I might have one. I don't. But we need a bucket of water and a bucket of lava, which I'll grab those guys in a moment. 
Uh, what else? What else? Um, I think that's good to get started. I think that's good to get started. Whoops. But I do need to grab a bucket of water and a bucket of lava. So let me run outside really quick. Actually, I guess I can run outside and grab the bucket of water. And then run downstairs and grab the bucket of lava. Boom. You know, honestly, I think there's a way to automate buckets of lava. Like, getting them. But it's... It's not... Super easy. Actually, no, never mind. It'd be super easy. I just realized how I could do it. But I'm not worried about that yet. In the future. Like, you can literally automate everything with applied energistics. It's, it's pretty amazing. But like I mentioned in the past, be careful with how big your applied energistics systems get. Because they do tend to get... Pretty laggy. But, but only when they're huge. And if it's only you playing on a single player world, you probably don't have to worry about it. Well, hello. Wow. <laughs> you know, I was actually curious if that tunnel up there, if that hallway I was building was going to connect with this downstairs. And not really. Kind of, but not really. Not the way that I wanted it to. Where the hell did I fall out of? I don't even know. Uh, what? Okay, we're just going to go back upstairs. I don't. I can't find the hole I fell out of. <laughs> well, I'm not even going to go there. So anyway... Let's go down here and there. So what I wanted to do, which this kind of threw me off just a bit. Chat, let me fly a little bit. Actually, I'm going to close this up. I'm going to dig a hole. Well, I don't know. I'm a little torn because I need to put lava and water down to create cobblestone. Maybe I should sleep. This stuff is a little loud. But yeah, I need to put water and lava down so I can create cobblestone. But, you know, being where this is, I want to make sure that I'm not going to put it down somewhere where I might run into... I might run into it, you know, uh, next time I start building stuff. So let me... Let me grab some cobble really quick. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you for that. Thanks. So I can kind of close this up. So I think I'm going to do it like this. Cool. The top up here so we can place our stuff down. Come on. Please. Alright, so we have a little bit of room for stuff. So what's really important with this, because this works a little strangely, if you will, uh, you don't want to put the water and lava down. Uh, you want to put the cobblestone down first, then put the water, then put the lava, and put the transfer node on top of the cobblestone. And then once you do that, you take your world interaction upgrades, put them in there like this. Bam. Cobblestone. Just like that. And this is how it works. Now, if you if it doesn't work any other way other than this. I've tried to do it in my test world. Luckily, again, I tested it first. I didn't just start the episode and hope everything worked like I've done uh, a couple of times. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Works great. So now what we can do is take these guys and run them up like this. Because they're going to be transferring their items from in there to our matter condenser. Of course. Ah. You know what I should do? Cover this up so I can stop falling in here. I'm going to do... I'll, I'll put in a nice floor eventually. Just not the top of my priority list right now. So this guy is going to be in the corner. He's going to be in the corner for good reason. Because he's needing to be accessed on a couple different sides. And I want to make sure that there aren't any issues. So boom. Put him down there like that. So let me knock all this stuff out of the way. So we should actually see... Ooh, I almost forgot. We need one more thing before this will start working. Because uh, what's nice is before we actually get the automation process going, we can actually get it started. Uh, so we can start creating matter balls for us. But first, we actually need to make a 1K storage cell. Oh, wow. I already have some. Nice. I'm not really sure why I already... Why, oh, I know, I know why I already had some. I needed to make the uh, crafting recipe for the 4K. And I needed some 1Ks to do it. So if we take our 1K storage cell, put him in there like that, this guy now has a little bit of uh, energy he can store. Look at that. 128, all the way up to 8,192, which is what a 1K storage component can hold, I guess. Nice. So yeah, that guy's going to keep on going. Oh, and if you find that this guy's way too slow, the speed at which this guy collects cobblestone, as you can tell, is it keeps getting 20 each time. Depends on how many world interaction upgrades. So if you wanted to do a stack at a time, just get a stack of world interruption upgra interaction upgrades. Or if you're broke, 
Or if you don't really care how quickly this guy fills up, you can just do one. You can just do five. You know, honestly, 20 is probably a little overkill right now just because I don't need a crazy amount of these matter balls. I only need a few because I'm only going to do painting for now. Uh, so yeah, you know, 20, 20 is perfect. I think 20 is going to be just around, just about the right amount that I need for this. Uh, all right, so this room's a little bit wonky. <laughs> this needed to be a little bit forward. I think I'm going to move it forward. Again, this is purely for aesthetic reasons. I'm sure people are freaking out. Why did you do this? Uh, whatever. Whatever. Don't worry about it, man. So anyway, like I said, this guy's going to be in the corner and coming around this way. Actually, let me think how I want to do this. Is this actually how I want it? Yeah, I guess I only need the one connection. All right, so bef before we actually put this import bus on here, there's actually a little bit of setup that we need to do first. One more thing we need to get. Oh, I took you out. My bad. I didn't. Oh, it's because I moved it. Did you lose? Oh, you did. Huh. I kind of figured that you would keep your storage, but I guess not. Well, today I learned. So anyway, let me give me a moment, actually. I'm going to kind of get some stuff together, make sure I have this set up the way I want it, and I will return. Okay, so I'm back, and we actually have a couple things that I want to make before we continue on. I want to make... Not that. Although I want to work on wireless stuff uh, pretty soon, actually. I'm kind of getting tired of running back and forth. Although you can't auto-craft with wireless stuff. Kind of sucks, but whatever. Oh, uh, yeah. We need one more... T we need a toggle bus which we've used before, and something that we've never used before, a level emitter. Boom. Now, the level emitter is what's going to allow us to kind of automate this, if you will. I say automate with flying quotes because we're not really automating anything. Everything's just kind of working until it backstuffs. But this level emitter is going to make sure that this guy eventually does stop, or at least stops importing into our system. Because we have this big, huge system of tons and tons of storage, this guy is going to be able to continuously make matter balls forever. Uh, so the backstuffing method isn't going to work completely, or else it'll it'll work until it backstuff our whole system. That's where the level emitter comes in. So the first thing that we need to do, I actually want to disconnect this glass cable first, and then I'm going to put this toggle bus on there like that. Right? Is that what I want? Yeah? Yeah, we good? I think that's good. Then after that, I'm going to put the Fluix cable up like this. Now, this is the easiest way to I've found to do it. There's a couple different ways that you can do this, but as far as simplicity goes, I found this to be the most straightforward. Then we're going to put them on there like that. Although, actually, JK. JK, he's too far up. Getting the level emitter to actually fit, because it's a multi-block, can be a little bit of a pain in the ass. So I found the easiest way to do it is to put your... Um, Put your cables where you want your level emitter to go in first because it's always going to try and connect. So if you do, do this first, then put your cable. See? See how this guy turns on? Nice. It's pretty much a redstone torch. Like, as you saw from the recipe, it's basically just a redstone torch that's connected to the Fluix cable and has a brain. So in just a moment, we'll hook everything up and I'll show you. One more thing. What was the last thing that you needed to actually create matter balls? Wait, why aren't you creating matter balls? What the hell? There we go. Okay, yeah, we got to set it to destroy items. So click it. There we go. We got ourselves some matter balls. It takes 256 matter balls, or 256 energy, to create one matter ball. So 256 cobblestone. Not too bad. What else can we do? Oh, yeah, we can also do singularities, which we worry about that later. And we can just destroy items. So this guy also works as a... Um, what do you call it? A like void pipe type thing. You can pipe stuff into this into the matter condenser, like anything. You can put anything into this guy, and depending on what it is, I think depending on what it is depends on how much uh, energy you get. But I'm not 100% on that one. I couldn't actually find any documentation to give me a definite answer on that. But I do know that one cobblestone equals one energy, and cobblestone is pretty easy. So since we have some matter balls, we can kind of set this guy up to work how I want. So what's cool about the lever level emitter? is that it will detect um, stuff that's located within your applied energistics uh, storage. It'll look and look for it. So it's right now it's looking for matter balls. And it knows that there's none in there because there is none in there. So what I'm going to do 
is set this guy to 10. Uh, let's do 20. And connect up our import bus. So notice how he's off right now. Emit when levels are above or equal to limit. So we don't want that. We want this guy to be set to the other way. Emit when levels are below the limit. So this guy is going to make sure that this import bus has power via the uh, toggle bus. See, it just turned off because it's not importing anything, I guess. Wait, I don't know why you changed color. That was a little weird. Uh, but anyway, this guy is going to continue to import matter balls into our system. These guys are going to, going to continue to create matter balls until this thing is full, you know, 64. But this guy is going to continue on until our storage reaches 20. Once it reaches 20, this will turn off. The only problem is I'm not sure how many were in there originally. So I guess if we pop this guy down to 10, he turns off, which turns off the import bus because the toggle bus has been switched off thanks to our awesome level limiter. So this guy can no longer accept matter balls. Now this guy is obviously going to continue to create matter balls until he's maxed out at 64, in which case he'll stop and this guy will stop and everything will stop and everything will be happy. Now if we take out matter balls or increase the amount that we want, let's say to 500, or 400, or 420, you know, whatever you want. I'm going to go at 400, or 500. Nice even number. So once this guy hits 500 matter balls in our inventory, then this guy will kick off, the import bus, bus will kick off, and then everyone will be happy. And that's pretty much it. That is how you automate the matter condenser. Da -da -da -da. At least for the purposes of creating matter balls. Now for other stuff, it requires a little bit more, a uh, little bit different. Actually, for pretty much everything else it does, it's even more simple. Like for the singularities, you wouldn't need any of this stuff at all because a singularity, a singularity requires a ridiculous amount of matter. So that's not really something that you're going to have an excess of. Uh, and then when it comes to destroying items, you also wouldn't really need to automate this because things would just go into it and be destroyed and uh, would kind of turn out the same way anyway. So this guy is going to continue to make matter balls which is awesome. That means that we can come over here and create our painter. Oh, wait. Applicator. Color applicator. So not too hard. Energy cell real quick. Uh, 4K storage, which I should have the crafting recipe for. Why do you need a 4K? Why do you need a 4K? So here we go. Here's something that has a lot of crafting steps. 135 bytes used. And I'm only making one, so it's not too bad. Boom, just like that. Remember how long it took for us to make that last time? Remember how long that took? Forever. And now we can make it literally in an instant. Granted, we have a lot of the materials on hand already, but still, in an instant. Boom, color applicator. Yay. I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure how to actually load this guy up. <laughs> I didn't test that far. Uh, but making these guys, as we saw, is pretty easy. And I think we're just going to start off with a pretty straightforward color, just blue. Let's, uh, I guess we can make a stack of it, or we're out of matter balls already. So 40. So we, do we just combine them? No. Do we open it? No. Do we just do, we just do this? Do we just paint things and it works? <laughs> Like I said, I, maybe I should have looked into how to actually combine these guys first, but anyway, let me actually uh, look around, see if I can't figure out how to do that, and then I will return. Okay, I'm back, and we have a few more things we need to craft. We actually need to craft something uh, that's actually pretty basic, and for most people, is one of the first things that you typically create with Applied Energistics. We just kind of skipped over it because we don't really need it, uh, except until now. We need an ME chest. And they are exactly, as you would imagine, they are a chest. But for storage cells. So if we actually come down here, I'm going to run down here real quick and put this storage chest uh, right here. He turns on. Very cool. Um, actually, ooh, we don't want this guy to connect here. We want this guy to connect only right here because this is going to be turning on and off. So let's actually, let's see, actually, do we want to move him? Let me put this back up just to make sure I have a, a better visual representation of the wall in this room. So, okay, that's not too bad. Okay, so we need to get something that I don't think we've used before. I mean, we've used it, but not for its normal purpose. 
uh, the cable anchors. This is going to make sure that those guys don't connect. The only problem is, is this guy is occasionally really, not occasionally, they're almost always a pain in the ass to put on. <laughs> so let's do this the easier way. Shift right click U. It's almost always easier to put this this stuff on before you put the item down. Bam. Yeah, there we go. So now those guys aren't connecting me, it's connecting here. Again, because I don't want this power loss stuff to mess around with the ME chest. So anyway, ME chest cannot read storage cell. That's fine, because we don't need it to. So color applicator, put it in there just like that. Now we should be able to, oh, wait, we can't open it. There we go. Oh, okay. So if you right click it from the side, it gives you access to the chest itself. And if you right click on the top, it gives you access to the interior of the chest, which of course we can do stuff with. So an example of what you could also, well, well the normal thing that these chests are used for, if we were to grab uh, this, M this 4K storage cell, which hopefully we didn't freak anything out in our system by taking that out, we can run down here, right click on the side, place that guy in there like that, Nice. This functionality is actually different. This is new. It used to only have, you just right clicked and then once you like you right clicked it and you were given the, this interface, except it was empty. Like it was just like blank or off. And then in the top right left corner, that's where you would put the uh, storage cell. Not gonna lie, this kind of threw me off a bit, but it's cool. I like this. I actually like this. This makes it a lot more similar to the uh, like crafting terminal and regular terminal and all that stuff. I like it. So anyway, what does that mean for the col color applicator? Well, this means we can do this. Yay! That's how you do it! Haha! -ha. So now this guy, as you see, has the little blue. You can paint stuff blue. However, it still doesn't work. It has no power. How the hell do you power this thing? In the charger, of course. Duh! <laughs> And there he goes. He fills up and he gets sucked back out. Uh, color. There we go. So now he has full power and we can color stuff blue. So let's run back here actually and hit this guy with blue. Nice. So give him a second. He's going to recombobulate himself since his color changed. He needs to redo all of his channels. There we go. Four of eight channels on the blue line. Very, very cool. That way, we can now, if we... Now, keep in mind, these glass cable don't give any fucks about your colors. See? None. None given. However, that's okay, because we have lots and lots of smart cable that we can use instead. Smart cable is pretty cheap to make. Well, it's not super cheap to make, but it's, it's cheap enough that you don't have to feel bad about making a bunch of it in a situation like this. So, in the future... See? Wait, what? Oh, I guess because this guy isn't colored. All right, so good to know, actually. Good to know. So I guess if the Fluix cables are uncolored, they will connect. Now, it still stands, these glass cables, you can't color them. Oh, you can color them. <laughs> well, son of a beer. All right, you can color them. So, well, fuck everything I just said. Just make sure you keep your cables colored. So we do need at least two colors. So if they're not colored, they will definitely connect to things that are colored and aren't colored. Good to know. And if they are colored, they will, of course, only connect to other things that are colored. So you're still making your stuff. Oh, by the way, even with this import bus sitting here, you still need to have this 1K ME storage component. Just want to make sure that's clear. Now, ob obviously, it, it stores the energy and then spits it out. Just uh, for some people that may not have noticed that, uh, just keep that in mind. You do need this 1K ME storage component, regardless of whether or not it's just importing directly into your system. So anyway, as we were, um, oh yeah, I didn't mention I moved these, but I moved these. <laughs> and I actually moved the Batania one a little bit closer because sitting right here, put it just barely out of range. So I had to put it here, which put it just barely in range. So what other color do we want to do? Matter ball. Uh, I guess we just do white. I don't need bone meal, really? Like, I don't have any bone meal on hand. Like, really? <laughs> oh, well. So there we go. So the same thing that we did before. Come down here. Toss this guy in there like this. Right-click on the top. Place our paintballs in there like that. 
Now we can pull this guy out. And then I think uh, just a right click, maybe it's a shift right click. Yeah, shift right click will change it between the different colors. And of course the visual representation changes as well. Um, now as far as clearing these guys' colors out, I believe all you need to do is just this, JK. Let's actually run downstairs and grab a bucket of water. I'm remembering the recipe now. To clear these guys of their color, just grab a bucket of water, like that. Cleans them right off. Nice. It ate the bucket. Oh, no, it didn't. I thought it ate the bucket. I was about to open up GitHub right now. <laughs> All right, anyway. So, there you go. That's how you clean them off. So, let me actually, for demonstration purposes, run back up here. Connect these guys back up, since I did just disconnect that. So, you are blue. You are also blue. I know I cleaned it off, but... I wanted to show that you could clean it off. So those guys are all going to be blue. This guy is going to be white. Nice. So let me run these guys down here just a bit. We can color all these dudes white. Nice, man. That is really cool. So for our next project, if like if when we work on our next project, like I mentioned, I want to make sure that what? Oh, because these guys aren't colored red. Let me just actually do this all the way down. There we go. Nice. Isn't that awesome? So, like I said, for the next room that we build, whenever we have some other stuff that I want to do, we'll be able to continue on with this white line without having to worry about these guys connecting. Now, the other option, of course, is to use the cable anchors, but this is a much more elegant, much more pretty option, if you will, because you can actually do some really nice stuff. Like, you can make stuff look super fancy. That's kind of how I was planning on using some of these guys, these top guys, is by utilizing the hell out of the color applicator to make sure that nothing's connected while also looking very nice and clean and organized with no confusions and no if at any point we say to ourselves where the, what the hell goes down this line uh we have failed now i might say it out of just like confusion because i'm just standing there looking at the line but we should always be able to run over here and, and tell what we're working on and actually that reminds me before we close out the episode, because I think I think we've kind of gotten to that point where we're getting a little bit, a little long, but that's okay. Um, before we close out, since this is done, this is completely done. We got our ME chest here, which uh, you know always we can toss our color applicator in there, add more colors, remove colors as well, which is really nice. And yeah, there you go, pretty damn awesome. The only thing is this thing could have been a little bit more into the corner. That's the only thing I'm a little bit regretting right now. Oh, actually. No, that wouldn't work. I was I was thinking I could put the chest on top of this guy, but nah. I don't know. I guess I could do that. Oh well. Oh well. No big deal. I wanted him to be more in the corner, but because of the uh, because of this little setup, I want to make sure that I have room. Nothing's gonna interfere. I could move it down one, but eh. Again, not worried about it. So let's close this out by putting a fancy sign over top of that connection to make sure that I don't forget what's there. What? Make? Do I really have... Why aren't you clearing? What on earth has happened? Did we just max out our... Oh, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. I, forgot to put, I, I knew I knew something was going to go crazy because I didn't have that in there. So anyway, as we work... Wait, what? Hello? Why can I still not place that in there? All right, anyway, fancy sign. There we go. Oak label. What is your problem? I pissed everything off. <laughs> it needs to recombobulate. Oh, no, you are full. Oh, okay. No big deal. That will be easy. Because we have auto crafting. Da -da -da -da. Well, actually, hopefully. Um... 4K storage component, go. Okay. I think the issue is that it has nowhere to put its components. Armor. So, in order to deal with this, we have to take out some unique items. Like swords. So now we should be able to have our crafting cell. 4K. There we go. Nice. So, with that... We can do this. Look at that. 
Hell yeah. Create another 4K ME storage cell in the blink of an eye. Well, a couple blinks of the eye, but nonetheless, fair, fairly quickly. Sweet. All right, so let's toss these swords back in here. Clear this guy out. Now, hopefully, we can finally make this oak sign. Boom. Hell, yeah. Oh, no, my potatoes. Oh, no, my sleeping bag. <laughs> Whoops. I got a little bit, a little bit too excited there about tossing stuff into the system. It's going to be very, very fun. So let's run over here, run into a little maintenance room, toss an oak sign right on top of there like that. And we are going to call this... Uh, machine room. We're going to make you a little smaller. Uh, machine room. And I think, how many channels are we using? We're using five of eight. Holy cow. And how did I do this? Storage 7 of 32. This is the first one. Three channels. The second one, two channels. Okay, so just a name and then how many channels. So nothing too fancy. I like it. Nice and straightforward. Name, and then how many channels do we have? We are using five. Sweet. I like it. So, again, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Did a lot of, a lot of fun stuff as far as automating the matter condenser. Again, this color applicator is going to come in handy a lot in the future. Plus, we learned how to use the level emitter, which I think we're probably going to be using next episode when we automate a few more things along with this guy, the toggle bus and the import bus. So thanks for watching, guys. I have been Landolin. Be sure to come back next episode. I'm going to clean up this room. We're going to get started on another room that we, I think, are finally going to automate the sugar cane that I can't see. There it is, that damn sugar cane. It's been sitting out there for 105 episodes being manually harvested by me. I'm tired of doing it. So next episode, we're going to automate it. So thanks for watching, guys. I have been Landolin, and I will see you next time. Bye.